This video takes place over an approximated 48 hour period. While it may not come across during the video, some of this was quite traumatic for me. So I hope you enjoy this in-depth review of the brand new Toro Super Recycler 60 volt, all black with Vortex. It was right about here that I realized something's not right. And things started to go downhill really fast from here, literally. But before we get into that, let's go back a day before so I can lead you up to how I got to this point. So here I am on St. Paddy's Day, enjoying filming this beautiful sunset, having a nice cigar. When all of a sudden I realize the new 60 volt recycler that everybody's been waiting on is on my porch. So we'll have to get back to the sunset later. It's time for me to get home, put on my Toro lawyer approved review outfit, which is long pants and closed toed shoes and long sleeves, and get out and see if this newly redesigned 2022 Super Recycler, which this one is the battery model, lives up to all the hype. So honestly, I didn't really know where to start. You guys know I'm like a huge fan of this brand, but this is a pretty big leap for me going to the battery super recycler, which is my favorite platform of all, and I've never tried it in a battery. So what I decided to do is just go for it. I'm just gonna get out and mow. And funny enough, the first thing that happens is it starts puking out the back. And I already can tell, I, I, didn't, I didn't check the mulch plug. So I go down and check it and um, you're gonna find this thing is not easy. So good thing for me is I don't have to take the mulch plug in or out much, but you know, I mean, not a fun start. So you know how I said something just didn't feel right? What it was, was it was in the handle. It just felt like it was riding high. I almost felt like I was raising my hands above my head. Now y'all know I'm short, I'm five foot eight, but still I've used a lot of Toro Super Recyclers over the years and I've always been able to adjust the handles, bring them down to where it's a little bit more comfortable for me to enjoy a more leisurely mow. So I start looking around and I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to adjust the handles and I don't see anything that's obvious or I don't see any anything that'll allow me to adjust the rake back or frontward or anything like that. And I'm telling you, this is starting to bother me because I really cannot enjoy the mow, but I also don't see a way to adjust it. Now on a side note, I will say that during this time, I also noticed that the self-propelled part needed some adjustment. So we'll get to that in a little bit too. So I open up the manual and I start looking to see if I can adjust the rake and indeed you can. So beneath these rubber flex shocks here, which those are nice because they do help keep the mower grounded across bumps, but you can take those out and you'll see you get about an eighth of an inch of play from up to down. And when you do move them to the downward position, that eighth of an inch, by the time it translates out to the end of where your hands are, it actually brings them down to a very comfortable position. So I felt a lot better at that point.
Then I also had to get out some more tools and go ahead and adjust the self propulsion just to make it a little bit more stiff to give me a little bit more power. The next day. So I woke up the next day feeling a lot better. The sun was shining. I felt like, you know what, I'm gonna get comfortable. And now that I have everything adjusted, I'm actually gonna get out here and enjoy the mow. And while I do that, let me give you some of the official particulars of the 60 volt Super Recycler. Super Recycler. The word Super Recycler is nowhere on here. See that? It's nowhere. Now they said there's a new hood coming and so maybe the new hood will have some different badging on it. That's one of the differences in this model. Uh, also, another there's another model coming that has lights. This has no lights. So from my research, there are two models that are going to be available. The one that I have here is the 21566. And the other model is the 21568, not currently available. Looks like the difference there, besides a $50 price difference, is that you do get lights and a more aggressive looking battery hood. Other than that, all the other features seem to be exactly the same. As far as features that you do get, I think the first thing to talk about is that battery. This is the 7.5 amp hour battery. They claim a 50 minute runtime, and I can tell you that even under heavy loads, I do get that 45 to 50 minute runtime, so that is true. Speaking of heavy loads, which was also my nickname in college, this is pretty cool here. They have this, if you keep it on auto right here, what that does is as you're going over areas that maybe have thicker grass, what it, it'll sense that and it'll pull more power in from the battery and I don't know, increase the RPMs or whatever, but you can hear it powering up when it's going through thick spots. So that's really cool. And then of course, if you're me, I just put it on max boost all the time. I mean, if you're gonna give me a max boost setting, that's where I'm rolling. But I'm sure that could affect my battery life. But as mentioned, I'm getting real close to that 50 minutes or even a little more, even with max boost on 100% of the time. Now I did pop one of my two amp hour batteries that I've got for my blowers and weed whackers. I popped one of those in there. It does run the mower for about 10 minutes. So if you had three or four of those, you could use those while your larger battery charged because it does take a good 45 minutes for a full charge. All right, so here's where you're gonna find I am not technical, but folks in the comments will be. So I'm just gonna speak to you like I'm a fifth grader. And what I mean by that is we're gonna talk about performance. And this is definitely indicative of every battery mower I've used to date. And that is this. So we'll just select the drive speed here, which the drive speed on this one is handled here. This is their personal pace. That's always been a thing for Toro. So instead of you having to do this, which essentially that's one speed when it's there, that's the only speed you're on, right? Whereas this, it kind of senses it. The more you push, the harder you push, the more the load, you know. So that is already coming through and translating well. So let me show you that. Here is what all battery mowers that I've used do. And I have it on the slowest speed, right? Here we go, ready? Watch the jerk. Also, did you see the hesitation? Watch the hesitation. Can you sense the hesitation there? Well, that gets annoying when you're going up and back and up and back and you have that hesitation around every, that's, that bothers me to no end. Okay, ready? Watch here. Now you're gonna have noise because I can't run this one without the blade going, but watch here. Okay, ready? Oh, look at that. Did you, did you see how smooth that was?
So I hope that's translating because I think most of you that have used any other battery mower, you will understand what I mean by that herky jerky part. And uh, this has solved that. Maybe in gas mowers, it's got a clutch, right? I think the clutch does that. You can kind of feather a clutch. I know when I used to drive a manual, I could feather a clutch to help things go into gear easier. So I don't know if that's what gas models do and maybe they've now perfected this personal pace or adjusted that to simulate what feathering a clutch does. I don't know if that's the right term, but I'm looking for you guys that understand this stuff. Uh, but I think my, my uh, visual demonstrations there will be enough to show you that this is one of the reasons why this mower uh, is so effective and so enjoyable to mow with. Once you get all the creature comforts out of the way and get it adjusted where you want it, then it's, then it's good to go. So let me point out a couple things on what I'm calling creature comforts. And by no means is, am I endorsing this mower. I, I think it's fine. But what this mower does really well is, like I'm saying, making things easy. The first thing is, I could actually run this without engaging the blade. All I have to do is push that button in. There's the blade, right? But I can also just, and it goes without the blade. That's kind of important. You know, there's times I wanna do that. This one here, I can't do that because this has to be depressed and you start, see? But now it's going forward and the blade is running. Now it's going forward because I have that really tight Because I and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But. There, I can't see another way to make it go. Yeah, there's no other way to make it go unless the blade is running. So back to the height adjustments. I've already showed you that to adjust the height on the handle there, you gotta move that little fella right there. You just get a tiny bit of play, but it's enough. But you saw, I mean, I need tools for that. With this one, You know, so that's what I mean. That's that's that kind of like small touch. Let me show you another. I've talked about these things, which really just, yeah, I don't need to say any more, right? Okay, ready here? All four. Bam. The unit also came with two blades, one that they're calling economy and the other that they're calling performance. They both look pretty much the same. The performance seems to have a little bit more of a rake to it or a bend, and it is slightly heavier. I will tell you that when it comes to cut quality, there is a noticeable difference in the cut quality with that performance blade. So I will be running that all the time because there ain't nothing economy about anything that I do. Now we're talking about the blades and cutting, let's go talk about the cut height because there's something that we've lost here. In past years, the old design of the Super Recycler, we would get a top cutting height of four and a quarter inches. With this new configuration, you can see here the manual shows a max cut height of only four inches. Now the wheel configuration is different too. You can see in the older version, we've got front and back tires, same size. In the new version here, we've got front tires smaller than rear. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Also, the deck is a complete redesign. The new deck is much deeper than the previous deck. However, I don't notice a difference in cut quality between the two. A lot of people ask that. This cuts just as well as the older version, and the older version cuts just as well as this. Just wanted to show that difference, especially with that loss in a quarter inch of height on the cut height. So let's go ahead and get back to that sunset and let me give you some final thoughts. Do I like the mower? Yes, I do. Once I got this thing adjusted, it mows beautifully. It mows just as smoothly as the gas powered version. Maybe a little bit of getting used to around the turns. Maybe it's not quite as smooth in that regard, but everywhere else, it's great. Very enjoyable to use, a leisurely mow if you want, or you can get up on it and get it going either way you wanna go. This mower does not disappoint. It's everything that the Super Recycler ever has been, and I like the improvements that they've made. You can see some of the things I questioned in here. You'll have to decide if those are major blockers for you or not, but I hope the fact that I went pretty deep and got thorough has helped you in making your decision. With that, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me some comments below. Let's start a discussion, 
and I'll see you in the lawn.